Hello everybody, this is John Buck here with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. And today we're going to talk about feedback, and particularly closed loop feedback in this case. Uh, the idea that we take a system where we have some forward piece called H of S, and we take the output and feed it back through some other system whose Laplace transform or system function is G of S. And then we, uh, we subtract that from the original input. Oops, I forgot a few arrows here. Let me add those in show where the signals are going, right? And we subtract that from x of x, the input, to get what's called an error signal that goes forward. This is a very important way to interconnect two systems. It has a bunch of applications I'll talk about here. There's a little terminology we should go through first. Uh, H of s is called the feed forward system. And then the other path over here, g of s is the feedback system, because it's feeding back. And then for historical reasons, when we talk about the overall system, the, the total co connection, we could say a, a, I could have a system function for the overall system is usually called Q of S is the closed loop system. I was thinking of this all as one big black box from input to output. The overall closed loop system function for that system is Q of S. Okay, so in, and in this case, it, it should highlight this is a little different than the way we've usually been defining things. For this overall and feedback, Y of X over X of S y of s over x of s will be the q of s, the closed loop gain, not just h. h is for any one input to output here. But we can work through this uh, overall system function, like I said, pretending everything inside the blue rectangle is inside some box, how the overall system behaves, y over x is the closed loop gain. And the first important thing we're going to do today is, is by moving things to the Laplace transform domain, see how we can quickly find the closed loop gain here. So if I think about the, for the Laplace transforms of input and output and how this block diagram works, we can work through these connections. So if we're going to do that, let me make a little more space by moving up. We can look at this and say that y of s is equal to e of s times h of s. Right? If I think of it that way, this output is just this signal e going through h of s. So again, if we're going into Laplace, I should write this as e of s, and this feedback branch is, as r of s. And then similarly, they say, well, what's e of s? e of s is the difference of two things, right? It's x of s coming into the adder here, and then minus r of s on the other branch. But we can quickly see, well, r of s is just equal to... Uh, g of s times y of s. Right, so I can plug all of this in up here for e of s. Right, if I take this expression here and substitute it up here for e of s, let me make a little more space, that tells me that y of s is equal to Again, I substitute in for E, I get X of S minus G of S, Y of S, the whole quantity times H of S. So I'm going to distribute that H of S through. So I get H of S times X of S minus G of S, H of S times Y of S. I'm going to then, I'm trying to solve for Q of S. I want Y over X eventually. I need to get all the Y's onto the same side and all the X's on the other side. Uh, so I will do that. So that gives me y of s plus g of s, h of s, y of s is equal to h of s, x of s. And so now I need to uh, I need to factor out the y to solve. And when I factor it out the y, I get y of s times the quantity 1 plus g of s, h of s is equal to h of s, x of s. And so now trying to solve for, for q of s, I get q of s, I want to get y of s over x of s. And so when I solve that, I have an h of s left upstairs on this side, and 1 plus g of s, h of s, on the right-hand side. So this is our closed-loop game formula. I don't, I'm not a big one for putting boxes around equations, but maybe I will for this one. This, this is a very important formula that shows up in a lot of places, from amplifier design to feedback control systems to actually designing inverse systems, we'll see, is another thing that can happen here, too. And so let me let me just scroll back up so we get that on the oops wrong button. 
get that feedback formula back up here next to the original system. So again, Q of S, which is the overall closed loop gain. Well, I guess I could put it right here. Let me write it in the same color as the stuff next to it. We get H of S over 1 plus G of S H of S. So again, this is, is our important equation for the closed loop gain. H of S is the over 1 plus G of S H of S. And we'll see by making different choices for H and G, we can accomplish a bunch of things. There's three main things I want to highlight now, so I'm going to go to a clean page for that. So for applications of negative feedback, one of the simplest ones is actually we can use this to make an inverse of a system. And to do that, we said h of s equal to some value of k for constant gain. g of s, the feedback, is the system we want to invert. So we'll call that p of s. And then if we choose so that the magnitude of k times p of s is much, much bigger than 1, then the overall loop gain is going to approximately be k, well, it is, it's exactly 1 over 1 times k p of s. And if this term is much, much bigger th than 1 here, right, then we can ignore that term. And so I get k over k p s. And so we can simplify this to say it's approximately equal to 1 over p of s. And this should be equals here to start with. So it starts as, as equals becomes approximate when we ignore this one. But again, so that's a very simple thing. By just choosing a large enough gain in the feed forward path, we get roughly 1 over P of S. Another version of that is, is we can use it to compensate for a non-ideal element. And this is H.L. Black's original great idea for feedback back in the glory days of Bell Lab, when they could build high gain amplifiers, but their frequency to response were, was looked like a mountain range. They were up and down poles and peaks and valleys all over the place. And so this was, was Black's original idea. And to do this, we assume that we have some, say, H, we'll think of now in terms of frequency responses, is high gain but erratic. And it might be you know, that it has a very messy frequency response. It might also be something where it's not too bad on any given day, but it's going up and down a lot as it heats and cools in the summer sun and the winter cold. Things are varying a lot. And then Black's other idea was then we'll use the feedback path is just a simple linear thing, so like something k, a, a constant value with no frequency dependence, so like maybe a resistive divider. And so when I do that, my overall closed loop gain, whoops, sorry about that, get dizzy for a second there, is going to be k, or I'm sorry, it's going to be h of j omega over 1 plus k times h of j omega. And if we choose k so that we choose our feedback path, the gain, so that k h of j omega magnitude is much bigger than 1, we can still say this is approximately, this leads us to say we get h of j omega over k times h of j omega. And now... As long as these two are, again, much bigger than 1, these are canceling, or I'm sorry, we've got to this, and now these two cancel out. The H's cancel out. And so the messy erratic thing is gone, and my overall closed loop gain is just 1 over K. So what does that say? That says as long as I pick, if I want to amplify things, if I pick K less than 1, we still have... The magnitude of the overall closed loop gain is bigger than 1. We have an amplifier, but an amplifier that is immune to any weirdness in the Bode plot or the, the frequency response of that gain. So I can make k less than 1 as long as I can, you know, so I'm sort of have to balance this. Like a lot of good engineering, there's a balancing trade-off between I want k small to get a lot of gain out here, but I need to make sure that k times h is still bigger than 1. 
So so if I have a lot of gain in H, I can can make K smaller and get a bigger overall closed loop gain. So that was a great idea, people. It was controversial. People didn't think it made sense or it would work to have this low value of feedback. A small amount of feedback path would be enough to make a lot of gain in the output. It seemed counterintuitive when people came up with it. But using knowing what we know about Laplace transforms and system functions, we can clearly show that's the case. And now for the last, the third case, actually I'm going to stop here. The third one is we can use feedback to turn an unstable system into a stable system using, using constant feedback. But this video has gone on long enough, so I'm going to stop here, and I'll do that next time, in the, or in the next video, and post that in a separate section on stabilizing unstable systems. All right, so that's all for now. Big idea here, closed loop gain is H over 1 plus GH, and that by using that, with the appropriate choices, we can either compensate for non-ideal amplifiers to make it act like a, an amplifier that doesn't depend on frequency, or we can also make inverse systems. Okay, I'll see you next time.